Marshall goes for goal. Inside the 10 could catch. What I say? What were you doing down there? Yeah. Oh, it's a long story, Arch. <laughs> Can't be that long. What a crock save here then. Mate, I was one of the great congratulators. <laughs> <laughs> and could he just top this off with the last goal of the centenary grand final? He celebrates as well. Is that your last kick as well? Yeah. Last kick goal in a premiership. Yeah. Well, I didn't know it was going to be my last game then, but I was probably teetering going into the finals anyway. And, and I remember Dennis pulling me aside and took me to the pub for a beer. He said, son, I know it's, we need you to send right back. I, I, I'm going to go with you. After that, I played the, um, you know, pretty good final series, first couple of games, and then um, the grand final, yeah. So played for 14 years, and I was sort of like had some sore knees and ankles and things like that, and, and to come up for pre seasons And I, yeah, I just thought that I didn't want to go through that, the, the emotions and the next year. And Did you, um, like trying to hang on and be part of that, yeah. Did you sense the group that we had and that this was a real opportunity for you to be a, be a considered a premiership player? Oh, look, I just love the footy club crop. You know, I've been there for 14 years and it was part of me. You know, it was half me off at the time. So I didn't really know anything else and everyone was my mates. The best part about that group, there was never any click in the group. And everyone was all going in one direction and, you know, and no one, everyone was, all, you know, on the same page. and. I think most of the group, you know, we were respectful of each other, you know, especially in the football field. And off the football field too, there's a lot of respect shown too. It was really exciting and it was really emotional and stuff like that. But we had a lot of games over the gym that were like that too. They're not quite as big, but you know, you try and put it to bed and then it's probably not until you get older that you reflect back on what it is. And so you join it. I was friends with a lot of North Melbourne people, a lot of that North Melbourne supporters, and, and it was really pleasing to see, or, you know, I was really happy for them more so than myself. But, you know, as soon as you look back at it now, it's like it's a, it's a major achievement in your life and it's um, really a really special thing. How did you see yourself as a football philosopher? Because I remember when I first came to the free club, you played more forward. Then all of a sudden with Dennis, you become yeah. a backline player. And even in that footage you said you were watching, your opponent, which I think was uh, Jason Mooney at the time, yeah. he was actually there in the goal scare split. So you've actually worked him down the ground. So yeah. that just yeah. talks a volume about you as a footballer. Previous game when we played Sydney and they flogged us, like you said earlier, they they flooded. As a backman, we, we all stood back and let them go down there. We didn't go and man them up. And they run down in waves and they cut us up. They all decided that day, wherever he went, I'd go down and sort of be close to him. And it just happened that he went down there in the last quarter, so I just followed him down there. I remember that as being a real focus going into the game. Yeah. You know, that if your opponent went behind the ball, yeah. you had to go. So they just didn't get those numbers behind the ball. Yeah, so that's the reason. So that's why you actually found that's yourself why I was down there. there. I, I yeah. didn't go down there. Just that. following instruction. Number six, Ian Fairley. Outside our four walls, mate, you're what people would say an underrated player, but within our four walls, he was very, very high. Very rated. Yeah. Yeah, so. Thanks, guys. Super, super safe, Floss. Thanks, Theo. <laughs>